Good afternoon, everybody. We'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll get started with our webinar for today. And as we're waiting, just a couple of things. Uh, we are going to be, I'm excited because we're going to be joined today, today with a, by a guest speaker. Uh, but also, if someone can just take a quick minute in the either in the chat or the Q&A box, can you let me know if you can see the Mighty Cause page of the webinar screen is up and also if you can hear me? Okay. Great, thank you, Todd. Zoe, I appreciate that. Okay, fantastic. So we'll be getting started in just a few minutes. And while we're, we're waiting, uh, the webinar will be recorded. So once everything is said and done, anyone who is registered for the webinar, we will send you an email with the recording and also with the slide deck. So, you know, no worries that way if you need to jump off a few minutes earlier or something like that. And definitely if there's anyone you'd like to share the webinar with, by all means, it's going to be on our website, but you'll also have that slide deck. And sometimes it's just a helpful, a helpful thing to have as well. So we'll give it just another couple of minutes here. And what we'll also do, just as a, a little note while we have a moment, uh, we're going to do all questions at the end. So if any questions arise throughout the webinar, go ahead and jot those down in the Q&A box and just know that we won't answer anything during the presentation, but for sure afterwards, we'll make sure to get to all of those questions. Just another minute or so. And for those who have maybe just joined in the last 30 seconds or so, we're giving it just another minute or so for people, for everyone to, to jump on. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get started. We are recording the webinar, so that'll be available for you. We'll email it to everyone who's registered, and then we'll also be sure to provide a slide deck. And just with any of our webinars, you can always go onto our website. We do have a free resource center, so that's available anytime where we have recordings of our past webinars. So whether it's this one or another one that you're interested in, you know, definitely feel free, go ahead and, and check that out uh, and see what else we have there. And we have a lot of things in that resource center. So, you know, always, always good to jump in uh, from time to time to take a look. So let's go ahead, it's, it's two o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so we're here today to learn how to make event fundraising easy. And I'm going to introduce today, I'm very excited. We have a, a guest with us. So I'm gonna introduce Brad. Uh, he's our guest speaker today. Uh, Brad, if you wanna go ahead, just take a, a quick moment and share a little bit about yourself and then we'll jump in. Yeah, thanks Ashley. Um, I, I'm also excited to be here. Um, so just a little bit about me. I'm. Uh, husband and father of two girls and um i am uh currently uh lead pastor at a church in the western suburbs of chicago uh, but also do uh quite a bit of work with an organization in the dominican republic uh called go ministries and so i'm on the board for go and i've been on the board for that not-for-profit that charity um 
for about six years, but for about 20 years, I've been um, serving with that organization. And it's an organization that has a heart for serving the most at risk and vulnerable in the Dominican Republic um, through sports outreach and medical outreach, um, some community development, uh, feeding centers, education, uh, that type of thing. And so I've been over the last 20 years, had a chance to see that organization grow. And um, just as, as I've become more and more passionate and connected with that organization, um, I transitioned into um, just as a volunteer helping to just raise awareness and support for what Go is, is doing in the Dominican. So um, that's a little bit about me. So, and thank you, Brad, for sharing, because I want to make sure that everyone knows you, you're definitely in the nonprofit space. Uh, yep. so this idea of, of fundraising, the, the pros and cons of it, but also the passion that comes with the work of nonprofits, whether it's in the United States or it's abroad, wherever it is, um, you, you definitely can understand that. So Brad's coming to us from a place of wisdom from all sides, experience, in a lot of different ways. So I think we're gonna learn a lot. Uh, what we're gonna take a look at uh, first, uh, we're gonna just sort of learn a little bit more about Go Endurance. That is the, it's actually a fiscally sponsored nonprofit that Brad sort of came about so that he could fundraise for Go Ministries. So we'll take a look first. We'll learn a little bit about uh, who is Go Endurance and then we're gonna learn how they took the Elkhart Lake Triathlon event and made it into a super successful fundraiser. So we're gonna learn about the planning and the execution. And then we're gonna learn how any nonprofit can do this. And that's, that's the exciting thing. That's why you guys are all here. And then we're gonna get just a couple of pro tips from Brad and what Go Endurance has learned and some things that they're gonna implement coming up this year when they do some fundraising. So that's gonna, it's just gonna be a packed half hour. Also, we'll finish everything with a question and answer time. So I had a chance to mention to you all before we got started that we will have questions and answers at the end of the presentation. So if anything comes up while we're sharing, go ahead and enter those questions into the Q&A box. And then we'll be sure to cover all of those at the end. Also, just real quick to remind everybody, we are recording. So if you need to jump off and you miss the question and answer time, just check out the recording so you can get that kind of that personalized time. And real quick, as we get started, Mighty Cause, we're hosting the webinar. So just a real quick bit about us. We've been serving the medium to small nonprofit space since 2006. We also support some pretty big ones, but primarily we're focused and designed specifically for the medium to small nonprofit. And we offer everything that you're gonna need for that year round fundraising. So that's who we are, uh, but now on to making event fundraising easy. So Brad, will you go ahead and share um, just about Go Endurance, uh, who you are, how you got started specifically with the triathlon and, and just how this all came to be. Uh, yes, absolutely. And, and I'll, I'll keep it brief just because we've got our 30 minutes and obviously if there's Q and a time and you want me to expand on it, I can. Um, but uh, it really started with me. Um, I, I was just personally trying to get healthier and I was participating in a triathlon every year in Wisconsin. And um, so that kind of crossed paths with my, passion for uh, Go Ministries and seeing development happen uh, in the Dominican. And I was just asking, how could I connect these two events? If I'm going to be training and doing this event every year, um, how could I use it, uh, leverage that event to raise money and awareness for Go Ministries? And so uh, that led to the start of a club that I now call Go Endurance. And at at one time, I had visions of it becoming its own not-for-profit, but uh, based on the, the, uh, the fiscal sponsor opportunity, I, I haven't had to go that direction. But 
um, but could have. Uh, but anyway, so it's really three things. Um, one is to be together and the other is to be healthy. And the third is to be for F O R B four. And that's be for a cause we do good together. So, um, the, the be together is, um, the more we, we are together, um, the better, uh, we'll become in all areas and, um, anything's more fun as a team. Uh, the be healthy. We all have a we share a common interest of of getting healthy together, and then we want to we want to do good and support a cause. And so we did it the first year. Um, would have been two years ago, and um, I I didn't put a whole lot of effort into it, but had um, there were five of us that um, participated in the triathlon. I think I was the only one that raised money. And I raised about $5,000, but that was when I was just first kind of starting to share the vision and then um, getting ahead of things, did the event again and um, got commitments, you know, a year, a year ahead of time and um, ended up with some of the notes you see there. We, we ended up with 15 people um, and I won't get into all the logistics quite yet. There might be some questions you have for, to guide that Ashley, but um, probably I'll just actually just stop there. So Go Endurance is a club uh, that we're committed to being together, being healthy and being for to support a cause. And with every event, we uh, leverage the event to raise money for Go Ministries. And thank you, Brad. And the, the great thing of what they do and of what we're hoping to share with you all today is Brad isn't creating an event every time he wants to do fundraising. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of, of what he's doing is he's taking, in this case, it was a triathlon that was already arranged. He's just joining in and along with these other athletes. And that's what, what makes it that much easier. They just get to focus on fundraising. They're not doing logistics. Like you'll see the, the fundraisers or excuse me, volunteers and all of that that goes into it. He's only doing the fundraising part. And so we'll go ahead, we're going to break that down into sort of how you, you brought this event together. We're going to break that down into three parts. And because we're, we're talking about a triathlon, there's three legs in a triathlon. And so the, our first leg, as far as kind of just sort of the, a real quick overview, Brad, can you give us a, you found the event, you already knew the cause you were going to do and the platform. How did that sort of come together for you? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great question. So the, um, the event I, that I was, I was already doing the event and um, it's, it's a, you know, small little lake community in Wisconsin that I spend some time in regularly. So I started doing this event, but it could absolutely be any, any community event. And we're actually adding multiple events this year. So uh, we're expanding beyond this triathlon. And so um, the, uh, the event could be something that's local or even in some of the research, I've been talking to somebody who, um, has been leading with, uh, he actually founded team world vision. If anybody's heard of that, um, they run for clean water and have tens of, I mean, they have thousands of people that run every year for it. And I think raise somewhere around $20 million a year, um, for world vision. And so they had some recommendations on community events that I can share later and some of the, of the pro tips, but um, the event could really be anything um, that's, that's local or close to your heart. And um, that is, that is well run. And um, it's something that's, that's a draw. So, um, and to your point, Ashley, I also want to find events that I have to do none of the logistical planning. Um, that's something that, I don't have time for, I'm not an expert in that area. And so I would rather just join in on the event that's gonna be run well with volunteers and have good marketing um, that's gonna promote itself. And then all I have to do is, is tell people about the event and they, they join in on our team. And so that's the, the event side of it. Um, did you want me to talk about the cause and the platform or just that for now? 
Yeah, go ahead and jump into, I know you shared sort of a little bit before of how you were connected to Go Ministries. Yep. But, um, just take a quick minute if you want to with the, the platform. I mean, it was a really simple way the way you found us. Yep. Um, but kind of what were you what were you looking for before you found us? Yep, that that's that's great. So that's um for me was a super important part of, of the process. I because of our commitment to being together. I wanted to find a team platforming, a team uh, fundraising platform, um, not, not just for, um, for example, we had 15 people participate last year, uh, not just for the 15 of us to be together, but I also wanted to divide those 15 into smaller teams for smaller group training, for accountability, but also to create a little healthy competition uh, within the fundraisers. And so, uh, same thing this, this year, we've got 17 uh, athletes that are participating in the Elkhart Lake Triathlon, and we're dividing them up into three different teams as well. And Mighty Cause, I, I found Mighty Cause through a Google search of top fundraising platforms. And just in all my research, it was uh, Mighty Cause ended up being the, the platform that would allow me to do um, all of the things that I wanted. So there were really three things for me. One, uh, tracking individual fundraising. Two, the, the team's fundraising. But then three, the overall fundraising. And so now we get to, um, to do all three of those. And um, that's another thing for me. In the same way that I did not want to plan a community event, I did not want to build a website, manage a website, uh, and, and keep up with the, the day-to-day updating that a website uh, demands. And so um, Mighty Cause was such a perfect fit for what we were hoping to do. And that's what we, when we say we're Mighty Cause was built for that small to medium nonprofit, part of our thought is nobody wants to do the technology side. No, nobody has time to do the technology side or very few. And so being able to offer that where we take care of also we process the donations we do the receipts for the donations so sort of once you get your page set up you're you're ready to to rock and roll and you don't have to like you said do some of that that follow-up so hopefully as just as everybody else thinks about how they can do a fundraiser or do an event to kind of keep in mind there's a lot of those after the fact things you have to follow up on that we can provide the reporting, we can provide the donor information, but all of that, if you can let somebody else do it, by all means, let somebody else do it. So that's what we want to be here for. And I'm glad we were able to do that uh, for you all and for your other fundraisers. Can you share as we go into, and we look at the second leg of just sort of that preparation as a whole, you have your event, you know the triathlon, you know your cause, you have your platform. How did you you go from the five fundraisers you had to 15? How did you sort of bring them in? And then how did you get them ready and actually raising the funds? Um, yeah, so as far as recruiting the athletes, uh, one of the things I like about the Elkhart Lake Triathlon is that there are six different, or maybe even more now, types of events you can do within the triathlon. And so um, the way we did it last year was we did it as a relay. So we had one person swim, one person bike, one person run. And so we made the event accessible. And so even though um, there, you know, there's a challenge for each person, to get healthy, it also felt doable. And so that's how I began uh, recruiting the athletes. And I did, I talked about it from the three, from our, I cast the vision around our three most important things, be together, be healthy before. And I invited everyone into a 10 month journey where we were gonna meet once a month. And it wasn't mandatory, but we met every single month uh, just for, uh, connection for accountability in our training uh, to encourage each other. Um, it's where questions could be asked and answered around fundraising and even training tips, uh, that sort of thing. 
And so that's how I recruited. What I have found, what's, what's actually kind of the opposite of what I thought is that the harder the challenge, the easier it's been to recruit people. So I, while I chose the event, well, I liked the event had multiple different options and, and a relay could be easier. Um, I've actually been gaining more traction the harder, the harder it is. And so September 17th, we're doing Michigan 70.3, which is a half Ironman. And we have 21 people doing that, which is so more than the, even those doing the relay and the try. And we're building to a full Ironman in 2024. And so I anticipate, you know, quite, quite a bit of interest in that as well. So I recruited athletes by sharing our, uh, those three, those three things that's, you know, those are felt needs for ever being together and having community, uh, being healthy, uh, doing good. All three of those are things that will connect to a person's heart. And so, uh, we just continued to, to lean into that. Um, as far as the fundraising pages, I've been doing development. So fundraising for, uh, about 25 years now. And so, um, I've had a chance to, um, probably because of that experience, I've been able to, to help people with that. And so, um, I prepared the event and team pages. People then create their individual pages. I've given, I just laid out the step-by-step how to do it. And then, um, as well, give people just some fundraising tips for, for how to do it. Um, and so I try to make it as, um, people can be intimidated by fundraising, sure. but, um, were you going to jump in? No, I just agree. A lot of people yeah. are intimidated by fundraising. Yep. Uh, yeah. Super intimidated by fundraising. And so, uh, to try to give people some easy wins is, you know, and some tips for, for how to do that. Um, and so whether that's through finding matching gifts, um, if you have, you know, a goal of raising a thousand dollars, I encourage people to ask one or two people to be a lead gift to, to come up with 25% of their total goal, because then that shows on their page. Oh, wow. They, they're gaining some traction. Um, and pretty much everybody has, uh, somebody that they're super close to that would be a lead giver to, to come up with about 25% of their goal. Um, and so that's, that's part of it. One other thing that I've done on the, the raising funds is that I set benchmarks. And mm-hmm. so um, my benchmarks this year include um, a minimum fundraising goal that everybody has. And, and just by raising that uh, $500, everybody gets um, some, uh, some customized gear. Um, if you raise $1,200, then I'll do something else. If you raise $2,000 and you get something else. And so those benchmarks could be whatever, but they're just incentives for people to reach reach certain um, goals. Um, And then I also, this year, the the ad was to create team goals. So teams of five, and we do have a couple of teams of six, but um, if their team reaches a certain goal, like $50,000, then um, then I'm, I'm doing something for them as well. So I've created some of those, those fundraising incentives as well. Um, but yeah, email templates, text templates, um, helping people with social media posts, all of those things are, um, are helpful tools that we can put in people's hands. And um, they've been uh, encouraging for, for our different athletes. And I think you touched on a couple of, of big things that we can overlook at times uh, just to take a, a minute with as far as the fundraising there's there's always a an array of people when it comes to the fundraising some people have done it before they're comfortable other people are willing to do it but they don't they don't want to do a direct ask there's and other people are willing they just have no idea what they're doing and so there's all these different levels of fundraisers and being able to identify sort of who's who but also having here's just some blanket tools, but also blanket incentives shows you want to see their success too, not just we want to raise more money, but I, like you said, we want to see the individual do well and hit some of those, those benchmarks. 
And that goes a long way for repeat fundraisers, having people mm -hmm. come back because they feel like they were supported the first time. And, it, and that energy of, hey, I did this. And like you said, I'm, I'm doing it for this cause I care about. And I was successful at it. <clears throat> yeah. You know, come back. And you also mentioned about your, your fundraising time or your preparation time. You've got about 10 months of yeah. training and things. Some organizations, you're going to have a four week time period from people, time people start donating to the event. Others, it can be a longer time frame. There's no set in stone way to do it, especially depending on your event. You know, there's a lot of options. So being willing to, to sort of think through just different out of the box uh, opportunities that way. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. We, and even though we are together for 10 months in training, um, the majority of the fundraising happens in the six to, six to eight weeks leading up to the event and even more so the final two weeks. Um, last year, we raised $52,000 and the majority of that came in in the four weeks leading up to the event. And you're right, you, you definitely want to connect their efforts also to, um, to the cause. And so even last year, at the end of it all, I was able to go to the headquarters of Go and present them with a fifty-two thousand dollar check, and so for people to be able to see that, and yeah. um, it's a reminder of of why we're doing it. And then um, one last thing I'll say is I did make a change this year to so with even within Go, we chose Go Medical to focus on, and so we even in our language this year we're trying to show to the donors what their gift. Um, uh, the impact of their gifts. So every $30 raise raises will support um, medical attention for one child for a month. So for just $30, you can support for, you know, it's, it's providing medical care for a month. And then for every $1,200, um, it allows go to do a mobile medical clinic, which can serve, which would serve 180 people um, for $1,200. And so and we're trying to be more clear on the impact of each type of gift. So, and that and that goes a long way with that that extra little boost. What maybe would have been a twenty five dollar gift might become a thirty dollar or thirty five dollar gift. And those are things um, as we sort of go through. There's things every year you learn something. Every year you you add or every event you know, if you do more than one a year. And as we and, and to jump to the that third and final leg, it was it's the actual event day. And like you said, so much of that fundraising took place just in those last couple of weeks leading up to it. So it was a busy time. Your your training and your fundraising and your, you know, living the rest of your life as well. The day of what was that like when it was okay, now it, it's go time in the sense of we've raised the funds now we're here to compete. Yeah, it was, uh, that was for sure. Yes. The most rewarding time. Um, so I did a couple of things that I knew would be a catalyst for future events because I, I didn't want this to be a one and done thing. And so I hired a professional outdoor photographer to do like a photo documentary of the whole weekend. Um, and it was, it was a lot of money. It was 700 bucks uh, to, to have this person do that, but it, to have the photos and it, it, all the, the candidates and the action photos from the entire weekend, um, made a huge deal when people showed up to their, to their lodging, to their rooms on, in their rooms and on their bed, I had, you know, um, custom embroidered gear for, for go endurance sitting on their bed with, you know, different types of, you know, race nutrition stuff in it, water bottles. So I tried to make that, that experience feel special. Um, and then um, obviously um, having all of the gear that we were racing in be custom go endurance gear matters. Um, mm -hmm. I've even uh, in, improved that for this year um, and some of the stuff that we're doing. So um so anything that I can do to, to generate like a sense of community and team 
Um, and then also to show my thankfulness and gratitude for all the effort they put into raising the funds. And so it's also given me an opportunity this year when I think about all of the costs involved in that, um, I'm actually, I've added an underwriting um, effort to my funding. And so, for example, I just had somebody gift $2,500 to underwrite the, the house that we stay in. And so by asking for that, that person was like, absolutely, because now the individual money that people are raising 100% goes to the need, not to those in, in, incremental costs that that occur by hosting or by you know putting on the event so yeah and there, it's something that that we'll get into um just kind of one of the last things that we'll touch on is going to be how we we steward our donors but also our fundraisers so we'll we'll revisit that uh as we as we go a little bit and as we just kind of as a quick recap of how you made everything easy we you started with you're not doing any logistics. You're not putting on an event. So then you were able, you're now free to focus on the fundraising, focus on the fundraisers and the event itself. Like you said, you know, it's going to be professionally done. You know, it's going to be well organized. So with all of that off your plate, and then also, as you mentioned, you don't want to do technology. So I get it. So now that's off your plate because you found a platform for nonprofits that, especially anyone who's wearing that fundraising hat and about three other hats, you're able to, to see not only are we saving money because we're not putting on an event, but we're also able to focus on our fundraisers and focus on those things of, you know, let's create the, the content, the emails and templates and those kinds of things where you're putting your focus is different. And it's amazing how often when you're not in the minutia of trying to create an event, you're able to enjoy again, what you're fundraising for. And you're able to like, hmm. even as you said, just the connection with amongst the athletes, but you took joy in being able to put out their gear and, and having these different things and you didn't do it all last minute. So throughout the process, when you're getting things made and placing orders, there's a joy that comes with that that can get lost a lot of times when we're just trying to get through an event. So <coughs> it easy being able to eliminate those event logistics and being able to let someone else take care of the technology is, it's gonna take you a, a long way. It's more than just having a good event for others to see, but also for you as the fundraiser, being able to have a better experience. And, and with that, we're going to jump to how any nonprofit can do this. So we, we've had the chance to hear what Brad did and how Go Endurance came about, but also how those individual fundraisers have made it their own too. They've, they've taken on the challenges and they've also spread themselves when it comes to, I might be okay with athletics, but now I got to fundraise and all of those things. So how do you bring that to your organization? And the, there's a couple of quick things, easy things, uh, not necessarily quick, but easy things. And the first is finding that local event. And fortunately we have the internet and most cities and affinity groups they, they're promoting different events that are coming up. So just jumping online and looking through, for example, running in the USA, it's a, they have their website and they provide a directory of races and it's throughout the United States. So you can find one in your area. Brad, were you going to jump in? Oh, no, I was sorry. Just clear my throat. Oh, no problem. Um, and then the other thing, when you're researching these activities, Think about your own organization. What is your mission? What do your donors or your supporters tend to be involved in? What resonates with them? And then focus on those events. So for example, if your organization is more focused on preservation, on just being outdoors, different things of that nature, then maybe you're gonna go towards an Earth Day 
event because it easily ties into who you are, or maybe because you're just getting your feet wet, it is going to be a 5k run. Uh, Tallahassee always does a jingle bell run and that's a great place to get started and you get your feet wet. And then the next year you can build on that and it doesn't have to be running. It doesn't have to be a, a triathlon. You can think out of the box. There's baking, bowling, other exercise events, music events. It, it's really unlimited when you start looking around and you can also just check in with your own staff and volunteers. What are they already doing? Brad was already doing the triathlon. The other athletes were already in the midst of this. So to ask them to join in, it was an easy connection there. So check to see what are the people who support your nonprofit? What are they already doing? And now you're also joining your community. So as Brad said, this is something that the Elkhart Lake community does it's not huge but now they get to be a part of it they're not standing alone doing their thing for go ministries they're in the community and now it's that awareness also well what is go endurance what is go ministries what, what are you doing so now you have another mouthpiece for who you are for what your organization does and brad mentioned this earlier as well as far as thinking out of the box he has people who aren't in his direct area. So you might have someone who's interested in supporting or being a part of this. So think through, okay, if we're going to do a 5k run on July 17th, can someone else join and also do a 5k run somewhere else in the country on July 17th? How can we bring those people in? How can we, we promote that? So there's a lot of a lot of ways that your organization can make this happen and still bypass creating the event, letting somebody else do it. You just got to got to find one in your area or find one in your niche. And also what you're going to be doing is focusing on organizing your fundraising. And Brad was able to touch on that a lot, 10 months, but there was some preparation before that but it was, it was 10 months. And now he's also, as he said, he's encouraging his fundraisers along the way. He's looking to see what do they need. So you're going to take some time to set your fundraising goals. And those are going to be different for every nonprofit. Uh, you're going to set your goals. You're also going to set your timeline. Part of that's already based on the event. Whenever the event is, that's your, that's your end date. So you're going to work backwards from that for your different deadlines. And as you're, you're working through this, you're going to prepare information. If you're going to be asking people to fundraise, you need to be able to provide them certain information. So Brad had the information as far as what the event, when it is, what we're doing, but he also had the information as far as this is how you're going to set up your page. This is how you can do fundraising. Here are your templates, here are your uh, social media posts, things of that nature. So there's a lot of information that you're gonna wanna prepare for your fundraisers, but you're not creating an event. So you have some time to do that. Think through past events, what did you need? And then build on that. And also just be sure that when you're, however you're presenting this information, whether it's your website or if you're doing just individual one-on-one -on -one conversations, just make sure you have all that information ready and available. So it will take a little bit of prep time and then you're, then you're ready to go. Then you're ready to say, okay, now here are our fundraisers. Now let's launch this thing. And there's, as we learned from Brad, there's no one set way to do it. And every year and every event that you do it, you'll get, you'll get a little bit better. Brad, what did you find as far as communicating with your fundraisers? Did you have a hub, like a Facebook page that you chatted with them? Was it mostly through emails, text messages? What worked best for you communicating with your fundraisers? Um, yeah, that's that's a really good question. We've we've tried a couple different things, and uh, where we landed was uh, with GroupMe. 
it's just a chat app. Um, but there's things like WhatsApp and those kind of, but we just created a group out there and um, I created a group within the, uh, a chat within the app that I'll take screenshots of like the main fundraising page. I'll take screenshots. If there's a team that takes the lead over another team, I screenshot that. When somebody gets their first fundraising gift, I'll, you know, like I screenshotted this year, the first gift that came in was a hundred dollars from somebody. I said, Hey, you know, way to go. Christian got our first, you know, he was the first one to, you know, to have someone give. So like, but that all goes in that, that chat. We've also tried text messages, um, which, which seems to work, but sometimes people get a little overwhelmed with that because of, you know, work and <laughs> the, the text can get a lot of hand sometimes. Um, yeah. So that's one thing. And we also, within the group of 17, each of our individual teams have their own thread as well, where they're encouraging each other. But usually it's like, like a group me or, or WhatsApp. So you're, you're keeping that communication going. And that's our, that final step for nonprofits mm -hmm. that you want to make sure when you're stewarding your supporters, being in communication with your fundraisers and not just to say, are you raising funds, but to, to let them know we're in this together. Uh, like we've been saying, we, we want them to know that you want them to do well just for them. So having that communication is absolutely key. And also think about on the back end, how are you gonna celebrate their accomplishment? So if, if you're a nonprofit, you have your website, the event finishes, you can consider things like putting a shout out on your website for everyone who is a fundraiser, everyone who is a participant. When you're doing, especially social media or, or things like a group chat, having a live, maybe not real time, but a running rapport of what's going on. So you're celebrating the people who are doing well. You're encouraging some of those big gifts or somebody gets a matching grant, something like that, so that your community starts to, to get excited as well for what's going on. So it's something that when you're, especially when you're using your website, using social media, you're able to encourage and celebrate your fundraisers and your community at the same time. And then that's going to pour into your donors. So somebody makes a donation, they're a first time donor, but now they're following on your Facebook page because they want to see how well their friend does. And it starts to bring them into the fold where you're showing you care about your community. You're not just sending out a thank you message. Thanks for donating. And now everybody's off on their own, but you're building that, that community. So you want to do that with your fundraisers. You definitely want to do it with your donors. Uh, what Mighty Cause will do as soon as a donation is made, we take the donor straight to a thank you page kind of the donation confirmation slash thank you page. You can customize a thank you message there. You also can customize the donation receipt that they receive via email. So immediately your donors are being thanked twice, specifically by you, by a custom message. But we also, if you have different integrations, let's say a MailChimp or if you use Constant Contact, you can integrate Mighty Cause with those email journeys so that right away they're triggered into that thank you journey. Or if you're an organization that does thank you notes, thank you phone calls, all of those things, now that you're not doing any of that event stuff, you have time to prepare and then to follow through with stewarding those donors. And then just like any, any event, you do want to have your debrief at the end to see, okay, how did it go? What do people like? What can we do better? What can we just do differently? So all of those things that you're still gonna do, but now again, you're not dealing with the minutia of the event itself. And when you're, when you're with your supporters, you have a chance to hear how they're doing along the way. So just to kind of, to close things out real fast, we have, and then we'll get to our, our questions. We have some Go Endurance Pro tips. Most of them we've, we've already touched on, uh, but just a few. We Mighty Cause offers a fundraiser template. So as 
Brad created his event page and then he created the team pages, you can create a fundraiser template within those teams or those events. Let's say you don't want to do teams. Everybody's going to be an individual fundraiser. You can have a fundraiser template there too. And what that does is it just makes it easier for your fundraisers, especially for the fundraisers who are willing to donate or excuse me, willing to fundraise, but they're afraid of technology. Create the template for them. It's going to take care of their, their page. Everything will be set up. They just need to send it out to friends and family, start asking for donations. So that's one thing makes it super easy. Uh, also, as Brad mentioned, with making it clear what the impact is going to be. So he used on his fundraiser pages, he explained X amount, $30 is going to bring care for a month to the clinic. We also have our mobile clinic for $1,200. We can fund that for a day. They're going to take care of 180 people. When you can start putting some of that information to your donors, it doesn't feel like they're arbitrarily giving. They can see their impact. And you can also do that in the checkout flow. We have donation suggestion amounts. So you can have that throughout. They see it on the fundraising page. They see it in the checkout flow. If you're having individual conversations, you're letting people know that impact. That's going to go a long way. Another thing that, that Brad learned and they, they saw throughout their fundraising, asking donors one-on-one -on -one for donations Yes, you can do blast emails, posts on social media, but that personalized one-to-one -one ask and asking, also as Brad alluded to, asking for a specific donation amount makes a big difference. It can feel daunting, but if you can encourage your donors, excuse me, encourage your fundraisers to ask donors for those specific donations, that's gonna go a long way. And something else I thought was great that Brad mentioned he would text out the link to his fundraiser page. And as you can see on the presentation on the slide, it looks great in a text message. He just adds a, a quick ask. He's participating, join him in doing good. So the, the ways of going about fundraising can be fun. They can be easy. These are a couple of things that Go Endurance came across Brad, what would you add, just any other, before we jump into some questions, do you have any other suggestions or pro tips that you would suggest to organizations? Um, specifically on the fundraising piece of it, um, you know, I, I don't think it's anything new than what's in your notes other than to, to emphasize the, the specific dollar amounts and the, the one-on-one. You know, our, those uh, of um, our fundraisers who they'll throw something out on social media and they'll be like, hey guys, I'm not getting any traction. Um, I, you know, a bunch of people are liking it and seeing it, but I'm not, uh, it, you know, the blanket is good for awareness, but the specific ask generates the, the action to give. So that's what, I, that's what I found. And then the dollar amounts is, is key to um i've i've had a lot of success in asking for fifty dollars for a hundred dollars you know i'll send it to somebody and say hey i'm trying to find 10 people who can each give a hundred bucks and i tell you what i i rarely get a no um if it's if it's not the amount they'll give something different so you know just last week i asked a friend of mine who who raced with us and he personally gave five thousand dollars he's not racing this year. So I just reached out and said, Hey, you know, you are a significant part of what we did last year. I know you're not in it this year, but would you consider giving, you know, to the same level to allow us to do, you know, A, B, and C. And they just responded and said, Hey, I can't do 5,000 again, but um, I'm in for 2,500 and I'll send a check. So like the specific ask it's, it's now it's daunting to ask that kind of, that's a lot of money, but the $50 ask, there's not too many people that are, that are offended by, um, by that kind of an ask. Um, so I would just emphasize the, the specific ask. And being willing that, that understanding of a donor mentality that if I can't give, if I can't give $50, okay. <laughs> but you ask me specifically, I can give something. 
and I'm willing to give something. Uh, so there's, there's also that balance of if, when you're going to your friends and family, they know you, you're not coming as a tyrant demanding anything. So having that, going ahead and making that ask. And the other thing too, is some organizations, maybe your goal isn't a super huge dollar amount, but maybe what you're going to ask your, your donors is, Hey, will you consider being a recurring donor? And at that point, then we're going to lower our donation dollar amount request. But we might say, will you be willing to be a recurring donor? $10. So there's different things that we can ask of our donors. And those are all bits that you can put into that donor, or excuse me, the fundraiser information that you're putting out beforehand. All of that's there. Uh, what we'll do, let's go ahead and jump to some questions. I do see that uh, we have one, and, and just it was asking for clarification, uh, with the individual participants in these athletic events, did they run their own fundraiser? So he's, what Brad did, go ahead, Brad, you can go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So um, I, I created the fundraising templates and I probably spent a total of five hours and that's it. And so that's to your point, Ashley, I, I spend zero time on the platform um, website. I've spent zero time on planning the event and I spent five hours on setting up the fundraising templates. And then I sent a step-by-step -step to each fundraiser for here's how you can add to it. So all they really had to do was choose their profile picture and set their personal fundraising goal. Last year, I gave everybody a minimum $3,500 um, and um, or $10,000 as a team, uh, which was fine. This year, I let everybody pick their own. And actually, I think... So last year was 50,000. This year, by letting everybody pick their own, I think we're at like $75,000 in, in commitments to, to raise. Um, and then they run, they run their own fundraiser. They manage it. Um, they do the asks. And um, so they set their own target this year. And um, I just help along the way. And so Melina, also to your question, their fundraiser page, it's a unique web page. They can customize their URL but it's all gonna be under that umbrella of what Brad created. Now there's gonna be times that he, he chose to use teams. So each of his individual fundraisers was within a team. Sometimes organizations, it's just easier not to do teams, which is totally fine. And so in that case, everybody's gonna be under the same event, uh, event campaign. And then within that, you'll have those individual fundraisers. And the, the pages that we have, it's unlimited. So this time Brad had 15 fundraisers. You could have 125 fundraisers. There's no limit. It just depends on, on what you have set up and what works best for your organization. And also just as a quick note, someone also did ask the, there is a recording. We don't, we don't have a camera, not, so there's not a recording of me or Brad. Uh, but we do, uh, we do record it, and then you'll receive the slide deck and the recording uh, in just a few days. That'll come. And Melina, you are very welcome. You are very welcome. Did anybody else have any any questions either about the Mighty Cause platform or anything for Brad and what he did specifically, or what he has coming up for this year? And just as everybody's thinking, I also. Want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, again, we've I've been excited about this. I got to see from the start as Brad was getting pages figured out uh, and then moving forward. So it's been fun to watch his progress. Kim, you are very welcome. I'm glad that you were able to to attend. So I'm glad that that was was helpful and informative. And we'll give it just another moment to see if anybody has questions. So. Crystal asked uh, the cost for the platform. So what we have for the advanced uh, subscription that we have, and that's what Brad uses, it has the full events, teams, and individual fundraisers. For that, we have a month-to-month -month 
offer. It's 119 a month if you're doing just a short term. Uh, but we also have a year round option and that comes to 99 a month. And with that, because there's a lot more going on than just the events and the team and fundraiser pages, there's everything from the integrations with different donor management tools. We also offer a CRM, we offer text messaging, so um, text to give, that kind of thing. So there's a lot that goes into it. Uh, so that's the 99 a month. And Kim, that is, that's the nonprofit rate. Uh, we just do nonprofits and then the fiscally sponsored organizations, the 501c3s. So that's the, those are the two rates, the 119 and the, uh, the 99 a month. Let me give me just a moment while I read through here. And so Louise asked, uh, what kind of fundraiser do we suggest for people in their later years? Um, so along those lines, as far as kind of something to that you can do, um, as far as like an event type, anything that's a, a 5K anything is not going to require a running or, or hardcore. So there's, it's really, I don't really anything in the community. Uh, there's also organizations, some of, of what they'll do is if there's something that's happening in the community, let's say that there's a, a 5K event that's going on and, and there, it's not about running, but some people wanna run, not everybody has to do the same thing. So some people are running, some people are walking. So that's a one thing that you could do. Also, just from a, a technology standpoint, because of, of what we offer, and Eva, I'll get to you in just a minute, with the fundraising templates and that kind of thing, they're pretty easy to set up. So if someone's in their later years or younger years, and, and like I said, just not real big on the technology side, what some organizations will do is they just create the pages for them. So if they know someone is just, listen, I can't set up a page, but I can email, then the organizer of the event you can create that page for them, send them the link, let them send out the link, let them do those direct asks. So there's, there's a couple of things that you can do uh, that way. And Eva asked as far as just how to, to do those individual fundraising templates. And you're gonna find that either on the, if you're just doing a general, not part of an event, just a general fundraising template, you can find that on your, overall organization profile page. If you go to your fundraising tools, you'll see the event, to, or excuse me, the fundraiser templates there. But if you're doing an event or a team, you can go into the settings on the team page or the event page. And Joe, I do see your name. I, I apologize if I, if I missed your question. I'm not, I'm not seeing a question for you, Joe. Eva, you're, you're very welcome. I'm glad that you asked. Oh, okay. Yep, Joe, I see you. No worries. We have just a few more, few more minutes. So Roya asked uh, about a copy of the fundraising template. So that's already gonna be on the organization webpage. So you'll need to be an organizer, excuse me. You'll need to be an admin for your organization page. Once you're an admin, you'll have access to the dashboard on the left-hand side. On the dashboard, that's where you'll find fundraising tools. And then at the bottom of that list, there'll be a secondary tab for the fundraiser templates. And then within the either a team or an event page, whoever created the team or the event page, as long as you're an organizer, then you'll also have access to that dashboard on the team page or the event page go into the settings and that template's gonna be there for you. Okay, so great, uh, great question. Uh, actually, let me reread it again. Let me make sure I've got the whole thing from Mitchell. So Brad, I'm gonna actually let you answer this question. So. We have someone, they have a contact person who has a small team of potential givers. And the question is, 
do you recommend a Zoom session where we present to everyone at once? Or do you recommend reaching out to those individual givers? Do you have a thought on that? Oh, I think I might've lost. Oh, there we go. I think I'm back. I don't know what happened. I went to hit unmute and I did something. Um, so um, I would say that the Zoom uh, piece can could be a great way for vision and information. Um, as long as it's a like a two step, I would for sure recommend um, a follow up. So I, in in moments where I've done like a, a vision to a larger group about our fundraising needs and opportunities to give. Um, I don't typically ask for the gift in that moment. I usually will say, I'll follow up with you individually with a text or an email. And then I do a one-on-one, -on -one, a follow-up to generate the actual action to give. Um, I found way more success in that than in the, um, the, the large group actually making that the moment where you ask for the, for the gift or the donation. Does that make sense? And that, it made sense to me. I'm going to, we'll wait for a response here, but also th those individual conversations, they help to start building that relationship. So, oh, good. Okay, good. They said it was a perfect response. Uh, so it building those relationships for the long term, that those conversations, even if it doesn't yield a super large donation the first time, but now you're talking through things, you have an ear with each other. And that's also, uh, you know, that, that's a helpful piece there. So we've got about, we'll give it just maybe another two minutes because we want to be respectful of everybody's time. I definitely, Brad, I want to thank you for joining us today. I know, I know you have, you've got a lot going on and you carved out an hour for us today and, and previously as we've had times to chat. So I really, really appreciate everything that you got to share with us and definitely appreciate your time. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, happy to do it. Thank you. And we've got, I think we've got time for one more question. Uh, Crystal asked, what would you say as far as a timeline, what, what should we do for potential donors as far as following up? Brad, when you're doing your thank yous, what, how do you do, I, I mean, I have my own opinions, but how do you do your thank yous? Um, I do my thank yous within 24 hours. That's me personally. Um, so um, I always will, depending on the size of the gift, be a phone call or a text message or an email right away. Um, so I, I haven't done, I didn't do any, uh, like handwritten notes in the mail um, last year, but it was always uh, a 24 hour rule on, on anyone who donated to me personally. And that's something that we also, we try to encourage uh, at Mighty Cause, we encourage that 24 hours and especially depending on the size of the gift. And if Brad, for those who have been brought to your attention as far as a potential donor, so they haven't donated yet, how do you, how do you do a timeline with them? Do you, just chat with them once. Do you have like a follow up? I I call them again in three days. How do you feel that out with the potential donors? Um, you know, it it probably varies based on my level of relationship with them and the amount that I'm asking them for. So, um, typically, if it's somebody I'm asking for a larger amount, it's because I know them fairly well, and I typically say, "Hey, here's." Here's what I'm thinking. Um, here's what I, if, if you could do this amount, it'd be amazing. Think about it, I'll follow up with you in a couple of days or do you have some time for a phone call um, to talk more? Um, so I usually will kind of head that direction with the larger gifts. Um, and then with the smaller amounts, um, if, if I'm asking for 50 or a hundred, um, I didn't, I didn't find my, I didn't follow up with anybody who didn't respond to me. I just kind of left it. Um, that's pro that's not typical fundraising, uh, good fundraising practice. <laughs> I know it's typically don't say no for someone. Um, and so just kind of keep asking if they haven't told you no, but, um, I, 
you know, I typically just sent out a message and if I, if I didn't hear back, I didn't hear back, but, um, for the bigger ones, um, and the ones where I asked a specific amount, I, a lot of times did it in two parts. Hey, here's the need. I'll follow up in a couple of days after you've had some time to think about it. And real quick, we actually have one more question, but real quick to Brad's point with that too, is a lot of things also are based on how much time you have. So there's a lot of times it, the priority is to follow up, but if it's a $25 gift, you might say, I don't have time because you can't do it all. So there, there is some balance there. Um, you know, the, how low of a gift kind of have in your mind, if it's this low, I, maybe I won't do a follow-up, but like Brad said, if you've got time, it, you know, you follow up till they say no, uh, but real quick, our, this will definitely be the last question because we're already after three o'clock, uh, but Viviana asked, and Brad, I think this is great for you. How do you suggest that we select our fundraiser team leaders? How did you find or select your leaders? That, that's a really good question. I, um, I recruited, it was really, I looked for a few different things. Uh, who are the people that um, naturally inspire? Um, and who are, who are people who are most closely connected with the cause that we're supporting? Mm -hmm. um, th those two things, because they're passionate about the cause and then they, they, they know how to inspire a team. And so um, those, are my, those are my three leaders this year. I, I lead one of them and then, and then the other two. So yeah, that's how I chose them. And Viviana, I'm really glad you asked that question. I think that's something that we don't think to ask until we're in it. And then we think, oh, I should maybe have thought this out more. So I'm really glad that you asked that. We're gonna go ahead and call it a day. Thank you again everyone for, for participating the questions.